Angela Williams, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Appreciate it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for your many displays of love through tangible and intangible blessings, too numerous to measure. Bless the city of Norfolk, bless every citizen who resides within its boundaries and every city employee who works to make our city great. Father, bless our mayor, our city manager, and this council as we labor together in the calling of public service. Give us the wisdom to govern fairly and ethically with equality, integrity, and compassion, and allow us to represent our city in a, si in a spirit of excellence. I pray that you will guide us through these difficult economic times and give us the strength and wisdom we need to make the decisions that face us. These and all other blessings we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. Thanks very much. The clerk will please call the roll. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to excuse Mr. Riddick, please. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The clerk will please read the resolution for the closed meeting. A resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk held in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Norfolk City Council. Chambers, thanks for coming out on this rainy night. We're sorry we're getting started a little late, uh, but I promise you we were doing the, the city's business down below just before we stepped up here. Um, for those of you who do not regularly, regularly attend our council sessions, the process which we will follow is the first things we're going to do is take up the public hearings. And there, I think, there are three of those matters. I'm, I'm sorry, there's six. And then we'll move to the consent agenda. <coughs> We'll probably vote on all of the consent agenda items at one time, and then we'll move <coughs> to the regular agenda. We will vote on all these matters in just the way they are numbered on the printed docket at the conclusion of the regular agenda. Um, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, it's something that's not on our printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity, and a lot of you, a number of you have elected to do that. All you need to do to get your name called is sign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the, uh, in the waiting room outside of the council chambers before the meeting began. So those are the rules. Uh, there are no ceremonial matters. So the first thing we're going to do tonight is go move directly to public hearing number one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for this day pursuant to action on, by uh, the council on July 10, 2012 on the application of the City Planning Commission to amend the general plan and zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk 1992 to create definitions for character districts within the city and show their location and by 6-1 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay. Now, uh, the first thing we'd like to do, uh, Mr. Manager, is have a brief presentation by the Director of Planning, Frank Duke. Frank, will you tell us, uh, come up here and for the benefit of the public and the Council, about how, how we uh, got to where we are <coughs> and um, how the, uh, the um, ordinance is drafted, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, let me stress that this is not something that we've just come up with in the past few months. Uh, this is an issue that council asked us to look at several years ago. Uh, any city that has developed over time obviously has developed with different patterns, different characteristics, and different areas of that locality reflecting the prevalent development requirements at the time it was developed. And Norfolk is no different from any other city in that regard. Uh, our current ordinances, however, are all drafted as though this is a suburban place. And I believe Mr. Burfoot was the person who asked me several years ago, can't you figure out a way to recognize that we have very urban parts of this city instead of continue to regulate everything as part of a suburban place? And that's really what this is the beginning step of. This is not a regulatory change you're making at this time. This is a planning process that we're in right now. The regulatory processes will have to come later. 
I wish I could tell you this is going to be the end of the final vote on this. It is not. You're going to continue to see this issue come up as we look at trying to revise some of our ordinances, particularly ordinances that council has said you want us to look at regarding parking and open space. Um, but the first step is to define the boundaries because once we have the boundaries defined, we then will be able to place those boundaries on the map to begin to set up that regulatory step. So the first step is a planning step. The ordinance, you, you have two ordinances in front of you tonight. The first one is simply to approve a general plan amendment that in general areas depicts what should be or what we have, what the Planning Commission has recommended to you should be the boundaries for the character districts. It is not defined with any legal boundaries, though that will have to be done as part of the next step of this process. But all this is is a general image a general map revision saying, or a general map saying these are the general areas of our city that have the characteristics of downtown. These are generally places that were developed in the 19th century or earlier. Places that are urban, which are largely those places that were developed prior to the 1950s. They are largely the, the older neighborhoods of our city and places that are more suburban. The areas that have been developed essentially in the last half of the 20th century. <clears throat> so the first thing is just, do we have the boundaries right? The Planning Commission, by a vote of six to one, has said these are the correct boundaries. Can you change those boundaries today? Absolutely. You just simply would have to tell us you would like to have those boundaries changed, and then we'd work with the city attorney's office to change the attachment or the exhibit to that ordinance, and we, we can make that, that happen. The second part of this is purely a definitions change, defining what is urban, what is suburban, and what is downtown. Once we have this general map plan amendment taken care of and we have these definitions in place, we would then be bringing forward to you the next of these ordinances which we are working on and that would deal with parking changes, again reflecting the general character of the areas of the city. Uh, so that we do not try to apply one size fits all across all of Norfolk. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Duke? Frank, um, many people are confused that they don't understand why we're doing the boundaries. Uh, we're not doing the boundaries and the specifics of the parking and green space at the same time. Can you make that clear to them that this is not something we're able to do? It's not something we can do because in order to begin refining those regulatory changes, I've got to be able to have a legal definition of the areas where they would take effect. So we are going to have to create a legal definition. We've already begun working with the city attorney's office to create that legal definition, looking at the boundaries that the Planning Commission has recommended. Once we have these general boundaries, we can create the legal description so that we can then begin to create those regulatory changes and have them in front of you. And if I may, I think what Mr. Duke means by legal description is meets and bounds. The use of the map today is legal, but it's not meets and bounds. Mr. Pishko is correct. Thank you, Bernard. Okay, Frank, stand by. We may want you to answer some questions. I, I, I'm, oh, oh, sure. I apologize. Sure. Frank, I look at, and I looked at the drop box, and I've got map upon map upon map. I can't figure out, and, and maybe it's just, I can't figure out which one, there's one that says staff, and I apologize, but one says CPC recommendation, another says administration recommendation, another one says staff recommendation, another one says, and then there's a different one. Frank, which one are we, which one are you asking us that, which is the 6-1 vote of planning? The Planning Commission recommendation is the map that is shown on your attachments as CPC recommendation. And this is, this is that map. The second map you have is the vote that the minority of the, the Planning Commission recommended, which included two properties that the majority of Planning Commission did not recommend. All right, so, so I can get this right. CPC recommendation, and we're talking about the properties on the north side of Brambleton, where uh, it's the Hague Medical Building and it's the Hague Tower. Yes, sir. All right. And it's the Red Cross Building. And the Red that Cross. Was, that was not in the CPC recommendation, nor was that in the minority recommendation. 
That is showing when you see the administration recommendation, and that is because after briefing counsel, you had, you had asked, do I have an easy category where the Red Cross building could fit in? And the answer is no. It is currently zoned as part of downtown. So it was the easiest way to keep them whole. And what, what staff is recommending, what the administration is recommending, is the graphic as it relates to downtown and the urban areas that is shown as the administration recommendation. That is also consistent if you look at the attachment to the ordinance with, with the graphic that is shown there, which is citywide, because those other maps are simply blow-ups of the area where there has been the greatest conversation and the greatest contention. Mr. Protegero, the attachment to the ordinance is labeled CD6 character districts. And I'm not sure I understood the answer to your question to Dr. Wibley, that the Red Cross building is included in the downtown and the CD6 character district attachment. Yeah. And we are voting on staff recommendation and administrative recommendation. The administration recommendation is what we have in front of you. Um, but yes, again, as I indicated, we have spoken with the attorney's office and you can make modifications in this map tonight. And that then will be the basis for the regulatory changes, the meets and bounds legal definition that we need for the regulatory changes. All right. So again, you just said staff recommendation is the one that we're voting on tonight not CPC recommendation. That's correct. And the staff recommendation for the ordinance is labeled CD6 characteristics, so there's just one attachment to the ordinance, so the others were given to you for information, and I'm not sure they're shedding light on it. No. <coughs> it's that it's CD6 character district attached to the ordinance, and, and it, it has the boundaries that Mr. Duke just described. I'm going back to... So to say staff administration staff and administration have labeled downtown to include Red Cross, Hague Tower, and Hague Medical. And that's what we're voting. And if we vote yes, then those become in the downtown, downtown district. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. Staff How, administration recommendations are the same then. Right. It's I the have C D six character districts and it does show so I can better understand what Terry's saying. And it does show that the Hague Medical Building and the, the Hague Tower and what appears to be would be the Red Cross would be in the downtown district. Uh, Frank, how would this affect if we were to <coughs> look at the area north of Brambleton and to decide that we wish that area to be a, uh, uh, a, a an arts district, a thriving arts district to connect at some point the Chrysler and the Opera House to Scope and beyond? Uh, how does this characterizing it as downtown, does that have any effect if we were to decide to do that in our discussions at the retreat? As it relates to these <coughs> three properties? Yes. No, sir. The area that we have looked at is trying to create this arts district where it would be able to connect the Opera House, the Chrysler, right. Scope. That's the area that there is a consensus from all parties ought to be included as downtown. Okay. Because what we need to do to enable this arts district is modify regulations to relax parking, to relax the open space requirements so that so that we can accommodate this kind of an order. Higher density and make it more of the downtown, and that's what everybody sees. Am I yes, sir. All right, so it would have no effect on that. That is already, that's the area that so I, I think, think everyone has agreed on right. should be part of downtown. Okay. Tommy, go ahead. Frank, I thought um, staff's recommendation was for the East Beach area to be suburban, but on this one it's showing our, our, you're correct. That was our original recommendation was that the East Beach area be suburban. I have indicated to several council members who have asked me that question, my own personal belief is it probably should still be suburban. That area has a plan that calls for it to become a very urban place, but it does not have those characteristics today. And I think until we begin seeing the, the more mix of uses that the East Beach plan projects happening, it would be premature to move that into the urban character district. We did not dissent when Planning Commission wanted to move that into urban because we, the focus appeared to be at that time on the downtown area, but I would still have great reservations about putting East Beach in the urban character district at this time. I think it's yeah, premature. That right. move. Yeah, the okay. community has asked for that to go back to suburban for right now, and we, Councilman Wynn and I we, asked. Can, can we 
why don't we do this? Why don't we listen to everybody and then we'll start making motions sure. because we may get some other yeah. feedback. I don't see anybody. I guess, yeah, my question was I thought staff had recommended a suburban, but it's showing up urban still. So if you just went with planning, then I understand now why that's still showing up that way. Uh, the only area where we hadn't come up with a different recommendation was where there seemed to be a great deal of contention. But I will tell you, as I have indicated to other council members, my personal belief as a planner is that area should continue to be suburban. It, it exhibits well, more let's suburban. Maybe we can narrow the, the discussion then. I mean, if everybody believes that we ought to pull it. Um, <coughs> I don't think okay. anybody has a problem with that. Yeah. No. I, I don't. Um, you want to make a motion? Um, someone? Yeah, I'm, I, I move that we change the East Beach area to suburban okay. from urban on the on the character district recommendation. Okay, do you understand that? Is I mean, you got it? I've got it. Okay, Breck, you got it? Okay, we don't need a sec, but I mean, take your time. Okay. This is a vote on the motion. Yeah, do you want to, are you prepared to vote on this? Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah, okay. didn't like that motion. All right, yeah. <laughs> It's Mr. Eagles. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay. Right, let me have okay. well, the, the Red Cross building was not in any of the discussions at the Planning Commission level. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. <laughs> and it is zoned in the downtown district already? Yes, sir. And I guess... Your, the thoughts of, of the staff was that we ought to include, include that in the down. It's already in there, so we're going to include it in there. Well, we have other areas that are currently zoned to downtown, the Chrysler Museum, for example, the Harrison Opera House. I have other zoning districts that should council want to have zoning in the future conform to these boundaries, I can put them in. I do not have another zoning district that would accommodate the Red Cross, <coughs> the Hague Tower, or the Hague Medical Center at this time. And in the Hague... Tower and Hague Medical are now in the downtown. That's what we are recommending to you. That, but what are they? They are zoned to downtown. Character districts, what are they zoned right now? They are both zoned as part of downtown. They both have shown up in all of the downtown plans as far back as I can go. Okay. And what about the Red Cross uh, building and that, that district in there? Frank, you, you just want to leave it the way it is for the time being? Is that what you're recommending? That's my recommendation to you, yes, sir. So when you, you right. say leave it the way it is, you're saying in the downtown. That would be my recommendation to you, yes, sir. So if we were doing nothing, there were no character districts, we weren't trying to work to improve our city to, to <coughs> you know, more consistent, then the Hague Towers, the Hague Medical and Red Cross would be fall into the downtown yes, situation. Sir. So if we change them to potentially something that would have a lesser of a use, we would be... I guess down zoning is not the right word, but we would be taking away the rights of people that own property. Potentially, but I can't tell you that you would be doing that until we actually have those regulations drafted and you're actually dealing with them. At this point, because all you're dealing with is the plan amendment, you're not in that process, but the potential would exist in the future, and I think it would be heightened if they are included in the urban as opposed to the <coughs> town character district. When you say heightened. There's a greater chance that you would, at some point, remove development rights from those properties. Okay, so if we weren't doing anything and somebody said they wanted to develop it and this had never come up, it wouldn't be an issue. We wouldn't be talking about it. They would do what they could do within their rights. Yes, sir. But the idea with character districts is actually to change some of those, and that's right. part of this. Is, for instance, the North Brambleton area, we are limited. So if we did nothing, we'd still be at the same zoning, which would be suburban for that area, and we wouldn't be able to make the necessary <coughs> changes. So you can go both ways on this. Um, it is, you have, to, you have to get rid of the zoning. You know, We're not talking about zoning right now. We're talking about making character districts, and uh, that's, a, that's a different uh, ball of wax here. So it, it's true that if you left everything the same, then we'd have everything the same, but that's not why we're here. But we are potentially damaging people whose um, ability to do whatever now exists. You're, you're creating a framework right now, and if you carry that framework through, that potentially could happen. Yes, sir. Is, is okay. that a defensible thing to do in the city? 
I'd have to defer to the city attorney. You know, at this point in time, the only changes that have been identified due to the character districts is to reduce parking and reduce open space, which would just be positives for developers. They could always do more than the minimum. They could do what is there today if we lowered it. So that um, <coughs> that's all that we know right now. And there are any number of possibilities, but I couldn't identify whether they could be negative. They could be positive, as Dr. Wibley says. But the two items that have been identified uh, would just be um, positives for developers, reduced parking and reduced open space requirements. So the only two things that are known to be coming to you. There could be others, but they're not known. I thought nothing okay. was coming to us now. Uh, n nothing tonight, <coughs> but that the, the, the next items are going to be reduction of parking requirements and reduction of open space requirements. And, and, and there will be nothing passed without this council's approval. But that the planning's uh, motivation right now is to deal with reducing parking requirements and open space requirements. And Mr. Mayor, if I could elaborate on what, what Mr. Pishko has said. Currently, you have the authority to completely waive parking and open space requirements or to sub substantially reduce them. So part of this is also to try to benefit neighborhoods and communities by creating certainty because through those ordinance changes we're talking about bringing forward, we would be eliminating some of the ability to waive ordinance, the, the parking and open space, and create a standard that everyone could rely on. Right, but, but I'm hearing different things from you and Bernard, and, and, and I'm hearing that the potential is pretty good that they wouldn't be able to do what they can do today, tomorrow, and he's saying, no, they're going to be able to do more today than they were tomorrow. I think what Mr. Pishko is looking at at the issues that you've already told us to deal with, and I would agree with everything that he has said, but my concern is you may want to go and do something more down the road and because we are supposed to be looking at the general plan for guidance I am concerned about that potential at that point okay well Frank stand by we may have more questions for you because this is not very clear even yeah, if, yeah, so yeah, um, saying, this has nothing to do with the architecture no sir of it and I think that a lot of folk are caught up with you know you know in terms of what you want to do with those particular properties um, and that's just not the issue that's before us this evening. Well, I think potentially like the buildings is... Yeah, but that, that gets into a whole other conversation, but, you know, there are still restrictions, and, and that would have to be dealt with. Again, come back to planning to be, to be dealt with. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, you couldn't put <coughs> a 22-story building on where the uh, medical uh, uh, right. facility is because you don't have the parking. And, you know, th this this helps. I mean, where are you going to park on the other side of Bramerton? You know, so I just think there are some reason reasonable assurances in what we're doing. And I think that at the end of the day, <coughs> I think that people think that we're biting the entire apple off <coughs> tonight, and we're not. And so, again, it, this, is, this addressed one part of it, and I don't think that this, my personal opinion, that <coughs> it, uh, it, it, it hurts anything. Yeah, but I think it's necessary. So are you okay. saying, Anthony, that because of the parking requirements, <laughs> the building in and of itself, if it were to be redesigned or something, could only be so high? Or it no. could only, it, it, I mean, we no. could on, <clears throat> only do so much because of the limited amount of parking? No, what I'm saying is downtown you have certain, uh, uh, the, the parking requirements, whether it be over by the Alexander or whether it be downtown. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is on the, you have a, you have three pieces of property there. You have that medical uh, uh, property there, you have the Hague Tower, and you have uh, the, the Red, Red Cross Red. building. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I would hope that as a council, you know, that again, that we would set policy and restrictions, you know, for days that we're not here. And I think at the end of the day, we're just creating a blueprint but I don't think that anyone on this council want to do anything to the detriment of downtown. I don't think you, you, when you look at what you have, you don't want to, to exacerbate the problem of density in that corridor. Okay. And so I just think that you begin to define uh, 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 those properties. But when you start to get into an architecture uh, discussion and saying whether or not these buildings, let's say the Hague so Tower were burnt to the ground, 
or like the young lady told me, an asteroid hit it and destroyed it. You know, what type of development do you build, or you replace it with? Mm -hmm. uh, do you do, you know, is the architecture consistent with downtown? You know, and so you get into that. What 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 is the architecture? Is it is it uh, uh, compatible to, you know, uh, uh, the surrounding uh, areas? So I just uh, I, I look at it and say, when you started talking about, I've heard some of the discussions and it, it centered around architecture and what you would build there and what it would look like. But again, this has nothing to do with architecture or buildings. Uh, I mean, it's beginning just to, to, to framework and a blueprint to be able to define the boundaries of, of downtown. And within that, you could begin to work within that framework. I could, uh, I could um, be wrong, Frank, but that's what Frank, we're Frank, I, I would agree with you. It, but the, the architecture thing never really comes I've before never, us. I've not heard so. architecture. No, it, it, I, I just, this is a conversation I, I've had. But, okay. but I, I would say Mr. what Mr. Burford is, I would agree with him because really what you're looking at, if you maximize the floor plate that would be allowed uh, on the Hague Medical Center, uh, Center site and then you used structured parking, you'd be looking at probably no more than a 10 to 12 story building. Right. It could go to a taller building if you had more open space because now you're reducing the overall floor, uh, floor plate, creating a smaller FAR or floor area erasure. So, well, so your, your recommendation that it be in the downtown district is because you feel that it is more appropriate there? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. There are about, I think we have 13 folks who have signed up to address the council on this matter. Um, as you know, the council still has some, some questions. We're going to ask Mr. Duke to come back and maybe if you have questions to try to answer a, a couple, but we're, we're here to listen to you tonight for, for sure. Um, all I ask is when I call your name, if you'll come to the podium. Uh, identify yourself for the record by giving us your full name and then your present home address and then please limit your remarks to three minutes and if you agree with somebody or you don't agree with somebody please you know we'd like to respect everybody's opinions here so keep your you know keep the the noise please to a minute if you could uh, Ray King Good evening, my name is Ray W. King. I'm an attorney with the firm of LeClaire Ryan here in downtown Norfolk and I reside at 5608 Shenandoah Avenue in the Lakewood subdivision 23509. I'm here to address you this evening as the chair of the board of directors of the downtown Norfolk Council on this issue. The downtown Norfolk Council represents 325 members in the downtown area which include businesses, property owners, and uh, uh, people who reside in the downtown area. Specifically, I'm here to express the Downtown Norfolk Council support for the proposed amendments to the community design chapter of the General Plan of Norfolk to create the definitions for the three character districts in Norfolk. Uh, as you've already been talking about, the three proposed character districts of downtown, urban, and suburban are downtown urban and suburban. The downtown Norfolk Council is particularly pleased to see that the proposed boundaries that you've been talking about for the downtown character district will include the Granby District north of Brambleton Avenue. We believe this is a critical part of the plan to help make it successful. For many years, the zoning in this area has been so restrictive and the parking requirements so stringent that compatible development, supportive of the, the vision of an important city and development, has been difficult to achieve. The opportunity provided by the character district amendment will we feel allow appropriate and compatible development to occur in this area and will enhance the opportunity for the district's potential to be finally realized in the city. The downtown Norfolk Council, and there are several members of the council here tonight. I would ask those present please stand to be recognized and anyone supporting our position. The downtown Norfolk Council is supportive of the three privately owned properties on Brambleton Avenue, which you have been discussing, to be included in the downtown district and not in the urban district. We feel that to maintain the maximum potential for these properties and in keeping with their current character, that they remain within the downtown district. On the citywide 
basis is our feeling that the simplicity of the three character district approach will bring far greater clarity to the planning process and permit the city to modify its land use regulations as, in such a way as to encourage new and compatible development within the city. We respectfully encourage you uh, to adopt the proposal to amend the community design chapter in the general plan of Norfolk to create the definitions for the character districts, including the proposed boundaries as I've discussed, and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time and allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you. Jack Plumgren. Good evening. I'm Jack Plumgren. I'm uh, president of the Ghent Business Association. I reside at uh, 200 College Place, uh, but my business is located at 1611B Colley Avenue in Ghent. And I'm here to speak against the proposed changes. Uh, just as background, a group of individuals, including people from downtown, got together, originally put together a plan that had those three buildings not in the downtown area, but actually had them in the urban area. Uh, that has changed subsequently. The, uh, the negotiated deal that we had come up with uh, fell through. And a lot of it had to do with a developer. Um, having said that, you know, the, the purpose of the character districts to me is to define the character of a neighborhood, uh, irregardless of what's property is on there now. I mean, what we're talking about is two buildings that are separated by a footbridge from some of the most expensive real estate in the city of Norfolk. Uh, the Hague, in, in the area around the Hague. Um, I don't think we have adequate people here to represent those people, but if that area becomes more fully developed as downtown, what will happen is the parking will spill over into those neighborhoods. Uh, you'll be far more likely to park in those neighborhoods than to park across the natural barrier of a six-lane highway like Brambleton Avenue. Um, I just feel like the character itself of those areas uh, belongs more uh, in the urban setting than it does in the uh, downtown setting. Uh, the earlier speaker spoke about how restrictions were keeping it from being developed, but yet earlier we heard that it was already zoned as downtown. So if it was restrictive, what was restricting them if downtown would make it less restrictive? This whole issue has gotten very confused. I've sat through three presentations on this issue and every time I've sat through the presentations, they've said, it won't make any difference, he's got this letter, or it won't make any difference because if it's zoned this way or that way. Um, it's, it, 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 is, it just seems to me there's a tremendous misunderstanding, and I heard a lot of the discussion here this evening. Um, but I'm here to represent the Ghent Business Association, and we unanimously supported the original agreement, which had the three buildings in question as part of the urban zoning, and the Ghent Business Association is also unanim the, the board has unanimously voted to continue the support of the original agreement and be in opposition to these changes. So thanks. Thank you. Bruce Bishop. My name is Bruce Bishop. I reside at 1405 South Vo Loop in Norfolk. I speak as a Norfolk taxpayer and as chairperson of the Downtown Norfolk Council Street Level Diversity Task Force. I endorse all of the comments included uh, in Ray King's presentation and his letter, which was sent on August 28th to members of council, and urge council to approve the staff proposal to amend the community design chapter of the general plan of Norfolk to create definitions for character districts within the city of Norfolk. I commend Frank Duke, who is incidentally an outstanding planning director, and his staff for their hard work in defining this concept and shepherding this proposal through the planning process to council for its consideration. This proposal, in my opinion, is a win-win for the city, its residents, as well as the existing and new businesses that will eventually be drawn to the Granby District north of Brambleton Avenue as a result of its passage and subsequent regulatory amendments. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Greta Gustafson. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Greta Gustafson and I reside at 421 West Butte Street in Norfolk. 
I've been a resident and property owner in the Freemason Historic District for the past 35 years. I'm here tonight to, to really not either support or oppose the, the establishment of character districts. I'm here to pose some issues that will need to be addressed addressed if you choose to go forward with the establishment of character districts in Norfolk. I understand the process that must be followed. However, it is extremely difficult to support a change that could dramatically alter the fabric of our urban neighborhoods. As many of you are aware, the boundaries of the Freemason Historic District have been shrinking over the past 10 years, primarily because of changes in zoning from HCWF1 and HCWF2 to D3, which has allowed an increase in density, loss of open space, and the dreaded battle for parking spaces. Our neighborhood is located midway between downtown and Ghent, and we reflect some of both of those areas. And had it not been for businesses rehabilitating some of our old homes, many more of our historic buildings would have been lost through neglect or through demolition. While we strongly encourage returning those structures to residential use, we respect the businesses that have been good stewards of their properties and involve them in our neighborhood activities and events as much as possible. <coughs> Although I've been told by Mr. Duke that creation of character districts and inclusion of the Freemason neighborhood in the downtown character district will not affect those portions of West Freemason covered by Chapter 9 of our zoning ordinance and the historic district guidelines. I do not have that assurance for the part of our neighborhood, which is the bulk of our neighborhood now, that is zone D3. Much of the neighborhood's D3 zoning was established through elimination of areas previously covered by HCWF2 zoning. The D3 zoning allows for greater lot coverage, less restrictive height requirements, minimal parking requirements, fewer green and open spaces, and fewer restrictions related to building design and materials. My overriding fear is that inclusion in the downtown character district would increase the likelihood of even further erosion of our historic district. How will these issues be addressed? Nobody knows at this point because we don't know the rules, almost. As a former athlete and as a former teacher, I would have been a fool to play a game with rules that had not been developed and I would have been remiss to test my students without first giving them instruction. It is an equally difficult task to consider a proposed action presented without expressed planning. If you choose to move forward on the establishment of character districts in Norfolk, I strongly urge you to insist upon readable written documents developed with neighborhood input and to critically review those documents as they are presented to you. Thank you. I also urge you to listen to the residents because we're the ones who have to live there. Thank, Thank you. you. Warren Tisdale. Uh, good evening. My name is Warren Tisdale. Uh, my office is at 440 Monticello Avenue. I'm here representing the owner of the Hague uh, Medical Building. As described in the August 24th Council Interest Staff Memorandum to City Council, the three character districts, downtown, urban, and suburban, reflect different development characters that typified Norfolk's development over time. The downtown character district reflects areas of the city developed first, with a broad range of higher intensity uses, limited on-site parking, and pedestrian and transit accessibility. Also, the zoning ordinance definition of downtown character district that City Council is adopting today is as follows. The area of the city that historically included the central business district and those areas immediately adjacent to it in which high <coughs> intensity mixed use development is anticipated. That is the character district definition that both historically and currently best fits our parcel. Brambleton Avenue does not mark the historical boundary between downtown and the first suburbs of, Nor suburbs of Norfolk. Brambleton Avenue, as we know it, was not constructed until the 1960s. 
what is now the Hagen originally was an inlet with two creeks stretching north well away from downtown. Historically, the areas to the south and east of the Hague were part of downtown and not part of Ghent. And from a current compatibility standpoint, the development of the property between the Hague and Brambleton Avenue, residential high rise and office, is more in keeping with downtown than with residential development in Ghent. I think reliance is an important consideration. The property on which the Hague Medical Building sits has been downtown zoning district four since the downtown zoning districts were created and imposed by adoption of the current zoning ordinance in 1992. To my knowledge, all applicable land use studies and initiatives conducted or sponsored by the city have considered the property south and east of the Hague to be a part of downtown. To change that now penalizes those who have relied on the zoning. And it is not as if current zoning is lacking in protection. The current downtown District 4 zoning of our parcel confers ultimate power over structures and uses within this district on this city council. Downtown zoning districts are not like other zoning districts. The city council controls what can be built and what uses can be pursued. Certainly that level of control is sufficient comfort. In conclusion, we request that with regard to the Hague Medical Building parcel, city of council adopt the character district map which from the discussion I gather is, is the administrative staff proposal uh, before you. It's the only sound approach at this early stage in the overlay process before any overlay development standards have been established. The sound approach is to impose character district boundaries that match current zoning. Thank you. Thank you, Paige. Rose, thank you, Warren. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Paige Rose. I reside at 524 Graydon Avenue, and I'm president of the Get Neighborhood League. And I think to begin, um, we would all agree that Norfolk is comprised of distinct neighborhoods, um, each which contributes its own vitality to our community and treasured cityscape. These neighborhoods could foreseeably be divided into three distinct areas. Um, thus, we're not here tonight to discuss the merits of the character districts, but rather the boundaries the reasons for the boundaries, and especially any reasons for potential carve-outs. When the Ghent Neighborhood League learned of the proposed character district amendment for the City of Norfolk's general plan, it began working collaboratively, collaboratively with nearby neighborhoods and organizations to ensure boundaries related well to each other between the districts were reasonable and served the unique neighborhoods well, especially um, as boundaries would impact neighborhoods with subsequent zoning decisions open space, parking, and other potential areas, the exact details of which are still undetermined. It was agreed to have one of the major boundaries for the urban district to run north of Brambleton Avenue, which is the logical boundary between downtown Freemason and Ghent from an aesthetic, historical, and transportation perspective. Despite the earlier collaborative neighborhood process to define the boundaries, it was subsequently recommended by the city staff at the behest of a local developer, as we understand it, to carve out <coughs> the Hague Medical Tower, Hague Tower, and more recently the Red Cross building area from the urban area and place these buildings in the downtown designation. It was explained to the GNL by the city that a developer stands to lose potential income if this carve-out did not occur. With the information presented, it seems the developer could most certainly develop the site profitably under the urban designation. This proposed carve-out is troubling on many fronts. Ghent residents have voiced their opposition to this carve-out, which would bring downtown-style development with less open space and less parking requirements, in addition to other potential downtown-style development allowances into the Ghent neighborhood. Abutting the foot of the storied Ghent Bridge and in plain view of many residents, especially those homeowners on the historic Mowbray Arch area. This also brings many additional uh, parking issues, which have already been addressed. The carve out would also leave Yarmouth Street in the Ghent Historic District boxed in by downtown designations on either side. Most Ghent neighbors feel this is very inappropriate regarding the carve outs. As no one knows the final subsequent regulatory and zoning implications of implementing uh, the carve outs, it is, seems impossible to make such a decision in a prudent manner without the zoning information available. At a recent GNL special meeting to discuss the situation, a straw poll was taken and the overwhelming majority are opposed to the carve out from the urban to the downtown designation. Thus, it would seem the voices of many residents should be heard over the voice of a developer. If the character district amendment is approved, just about there, 
The Get Neighborhood League respectfully asked the boundary between downtown and urban areas to remain at Brambleton Avenue as earlier recommended by the Planning Commission and without the carve out. This would help preserve and protect the Get Neighborhood for generations to come for current residents and also for the developer to enjoy his right for financial gain. Many have asked what's the rush and as we consider the uh, decisions for boundary lines, the reasons for the boundary lines and potential carve outs without knowing the specific zoning information and the realization this decision will affect all neighborhoods, especially those which Thank coexist you. in close proximity. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Moss, Cannon Moss. Uh, hello, my name is Cannon Moss and I live at 723 Yarmouth Street. I appreciate the opportunity to stand before the council to discuss my concerns with the proposed character districts being discussed tonight. We were able to meet with the city, with city officials last week to get, to get an overview of the districts and some of the reasoning behind why certain areas are classed urban or downtown. While we appreciate the opportunity to be briefed on what is going on in our neighborhood, the meeting left many of us with more questions than answers. From what I understand, these character districts really boil down to parking and open, open space requirements which matter greatly to my neighbors and me. I chose to buy my house in a downtown urban area. While I, while I like where I live, I understand uh, with a great location comes some sacrifice. Parking happens to be one of them. This is why I am so sensitive to losing what little parking we have. The parking on our street is extremely limited. We are surrounded today by the Hague Towers, the Chrysler, Brambleton Avenue, and Duke Street. Once our street parking is taken, there are very few options for us. With that being said, I'll go back to the issue with the districts as they are presented today. We understand that the requirements for each of these districts have not been outlined. If that's the case, then how can you vote for the boundaries of these districts when the impacts to the surrounding neighborhoods is unknown? <clears throat> I look at the Hague Medical Building and I think, if this gets developed into a downtown style high rise development, where are all the people gonna park? I know there's no parking on Brambleton, so that leaves Mowbray Arch across the Hague. People will park there for convenience and walk across the pedestrian bridge. This creates serious parking issues for the people that live here. I look at the Red Cross building and wonder, if that becomes some sort of high rise with limited parking requirements, what happens to me? Where am I gonna park? Now, I'm not standing here and saying stop the progress. I'm asking you to consider the citizens that live in these areas, not the developer. It might be unfair to the developer, excuse me, it might be unfair to the developer as we were told in our meeting, but what about the surrounding residents? Does the developer who built the Brambleton apartments have to fight for a parking spot when they get home at 5 p.m. because the YMCA is busy? I doubt it. Before you vote on these districts, I think it is very important to understand what impact they have on the surrounding neighborhood, and there is no way to know that if the districts themselves are not defined. <clears throat> I look at historic Yarmouth Street, the last gas lamp street in Norfolk, that carries tourists from the red light stop to the Chrysler with its beautiful historic homes, surrounded by what, skyscrapers? You might think I'm overreacting, but that could become a reality with the development of the Red Cross building and the adjacent open space. I'm not asking you to stop progress. In fact, I welcome it. I just want to make sure and my fellow neighbors and I, that my fellow neighbors and I know exactly how we will be affected and uh, how we'll be affected. And right now, you guys can't answer that. Thank you. Lee, Lee Snyder. I didn't, didn't, I didn't. Okay. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, Bob Volbrecht, Mr. Volbrecht. <laughs> You're on your own. Good evening. My name is uh, Bob, Vol Ooh. Bob Volbrecht. I live at 414 uh, Marbury Arch for about 18 years. Don't buy an old house, by the way. Uh, live there. It's a great neighborhood. Uh, I tell you what, I had a go around when I tried to put a satellite on my roof for satellite TV, and now they said, oh, Bob, they're putting a 10-story building on the Hague. From what I can see, it's going to be maybe 10 stories, 8 stories, 12 stories. Parking around there, like Cannon said, as hard as it is now, uh, I'm totally against it. I'd like to go on record about that. And it sounds, uh, uh, the confusion factor here, and I don't mean to say confusion, I, there's too many variables to make an intelligent decision from what I can see right now. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon, is it Ple Ple Plevin? Oh, sorry, okay. Uh, Pam Clopel.
Good evening. My name is Pam Clopel, and I'm a property owner at 804 through 814 Granby Street. And I'm here to support the creation of character districts in Norfolk's general plan and for the resulting zoning changes where appropriate in these character districts. My Granby Street property is located between Brambleton Avenue and Princess Anne Road in an area called North of Brambleton. It is the weak link between two renovated and prospering areas of Granby Street. It's a vulnerable two blocks with little building renovation and limited enticement for new tenants. The parking ordinance here requires that the number of parking places allocated to a business be tied to the size of the building which houses the business. Therefore, restaurants, bars, theaters, and other businesses which bring feet on the street do not consider the seven and 800 block of Granby Street. It's such a shame when this is so close to the Harrison Opera House and to the Chrysler Museum, both of which are major attractions in the city of Norfolk. One of my tenants has considered creating a space for his bridal flower customers to have weddings and receptions. The current zoning does not allow such innovations. The zoning is so restrictive north of Brambleton that attracting new tenants and maximizing the locational opportunity has been almost impossible. I personally have had one building vacant for an entire year. With the inclusion of the 800 and 700 blocks of Granby Street in the downtown character district, parking requirements should become the same as south of Brambleton. <coughs> this would bring consistency in parking regulations to the downtown improvement district and encourage more businesses and tenants to consider locating in these two blocks of Granby Street. Therefore, I ask you to please vote for inclusion of the three character excuse me, districts in the general plan as recommended to you by your city's planning commission. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Irene O'Brien. <clears throat> Um, thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Irene O'Brien. I live at 833 Brandon Avenue, which is right off of Cauley, near Blair Middle School. I am a second vice president of the Ghent Neighborhood League, um, and I'm also a liaison to the Ghent Business Association. Um, I come here before you as not somebody who lives along The Hague, but is concerned about my community, Ghent. Um, you know, I feel a lot like what we're putting the cart before the horse, not knowing what exactly, or even just a general idea of what the future zoning will be for these areas. Um, and I feel that um, right now, if we maybe kind of left that area that is north of Brambleton, uh, in near the Ghent area along the Hague, out of the character districts to be decided upon afterwards once zoning was figured out, that it would be more productive for the character districts to move forward and you know resolve these controversial and unknown questions. Um, um, the area of north of Brambleton near Ghent, I feel, has already had a, is, is already a great dividing line. You know, si a six-lane road is, is a pretty good indicator, I think. Um, the area north of Brambleton on Granby, though, that is an area that it needs development. And I think, it, you know, being characterized, put into downtown is something that is very important. But not all of the, you know, area north of Brambleton needs to be done. Um, I do ask that, um, you know, as far as parking, many people, you know, that's one of our biggest concerns. Nobody's going to walk across six lanes roads to go park <clears throat> in a city parking lot near the Y or any parking lots. They're going to go walk across a footbridge and park in people's neighborhoods. And parking stickers in our neighborhoods, while in downtown may be effective, <clears throat> they are not effective in Ghent. And the, by example is Centera. You know, people, they have plenty of parking garages and probably plenty of parking for their employees and visitors, but employees still park in the Ghent area, and it's hard for the city of Norfolk's, you know, parking, you know, people to watch, or the police pay attention and monitor those areas. <coughs> um, so, you know, lastly, I ask that you, you know, support the Ghent Neighborhood League and the Ghent Business Association in our opposition in allowing this area to be carved out and put into the downtown character district. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tanya, Tanya Banks uh, says she's opposed to the, uh, uh, I guess, the, to the ordinance the way it's drafted, doesn't wish to speak. 
um, <coughs> unless you have something that uh, Charles Snyder doesn't wish to speak. He lists himself as an opponent. And Tom Johnson is here to answer <coughs> questions. If there are any, anybody has any questions. Okay. All right. Um, is the is the, any statements? Any questions? Anybody want to make? I just want to ask comments. Questions. Okay. Ask um, Frank. Frank. <coughs> Maybe you could tell me, but uh, what's the difference between urban and downtown? I mean, just in the general sense, because urban usually consists of downtown. Um, <clears throat> no, we going just as urban. Far. Urban, in the context in which we have described it, includes neighborhoods in which uses exist in proximity to one another such as you find in Ghent where you do have the commercial areas that back up immediately to the residential areas of the neighborhood. <clears throat> um, whereas downtown, you, you typically have them more intermingled where you have more of the residential immediately above or even in Freemason where you've got them directly uh, <coughs> next to one another. So we created our own de definition. We have created our own definitions. What we looked at was a street pattern. Um, so you're looking at smaller blocks in your downtown area. They begin to get larger as you get outside of downtown into the urban areas. The mix of uses is different. Building heights is different. Downtown, you have very small uh, yards, whereas as you get into urban, they begin to become a little more gracious. Uh, you get into suburban, and you're getting into the much bigger lawns. Okay. I would just, you know, I... I think we had created our own definition because, I mean, urban, you know. It, it was a challenge to try to figure out how to word this. We did the best we could. Okay. Uh, let me say a couple things. Um, I think the big problem we have is that, no, that we nobody knows what we're going to have. <coughs> we have to establish the district, I think you're saying, by law, and then do, then establish what goes in the districts. Now, the idea of of exempting this, leaving these three properties in no man's land. Is that against the law? Until we figure out what's going to go in downtown and what's going to go in Ghent and, and ha what impact that might have. Legally, you're under no obligation to do this at all. I understand. And that, that's my next question. If we vote for this and it's in the downtown district, then you know that's finished. If, if we vote against it, then character districts are finished. Yes, sir. So we're in a terrible position in my mind because with all this work and all this staff that's gone through for months and years, if it goes down because Gent wants one thing and, and, and gets their way, which you know may happen, then we have no character district. So why can't we, if, if we make the law, exempt those three properties, put the other, everything else as you have it, Find out exactly what you're going to put downtown, what the rules are going to be there, what the rules are going to be in the urban, and then react to those appropriately, and then put those in the place that, so that there's not this uncertainty that people have out there. Now, the, the downside of that is they stay exactly like their zone now. So whatever by law they could do, they could do until we settle this issue. But if you... Put them in the downtown district they exactly the way they are anyway. Is that a in, fair in statement? In terms of the, well, we don't know. What we're talking well, about with regard to parking is that the downtown parking requirement on the north side of Brambleton would be consistent with the recommendations of, of the Institute for Transportation Engineers in this outline area, which is roughly three quarter, or I'm sorry, two thirds of what would be required in suburban areas and then you get into urban areas and it's roughly 80 percent so that's the difference you're talking about there is parking is the one thing where we have done the research where I can tell you those are the standards as we've presented to you before uh, that we'd be recommending with regard to parking the challenge that you've got if you just leave these areas exactly the way are they are now parking requirement is to be determined at the time you do deal with <coughs> The approval of the individual project. There is no 
defined we standard. We do that until yeah. we had something that everybody understood. But yeah. it would not allow us to make the progress that we're hoping to make in the North Brambleton <coughs> area. The, the idea behind this character districts was to give us the leverage to to have the ability to bring in development in the North Brambleton area and to stop this constant every time a development comes to us that we as council, because we're under suburban rules right now, we waive the restrictions. It has inconsistency, it wastes people's time, it gives um, a great well, deal of confusion. But there's the nothing thing pending. That, there's nothing going to happen in the time I would hope that we could get these rules set. But. But again, you can't get the rules set without the boundaries. But I, there is one thing, and Frank, correct me if I'm wrong, because I've sat through a lot of these meetings. And Frank always presents to us what would be essentially the requirements for green space in urban, the requirements in downtown, the requirements for parking. <coughs> He'll even tell us what the percentage difference is between the two. So the impression that many have left or are left with that these are or these are restrictions that are just floating around with no framework at all is incorrect. There are frameworks. They may not be voted on yet, but there certainly are frameworks that we've all listened to, we've all talked about in the meetings. So it really isn't as nebulous as many people say. I understand people that are saying, how in the world can we vote on the rules when we don't know the rules? We actually do know the rules. We may not have it down to the fine, finite, um, but Frank, am I correct on this? Yes, ma'am. Secondly, my frustration on this, very frankly, and, and this is just because this is the way I'm voting, is I feel very strongly about having character districts. We need character districts. But I am frustrated that we can't vote on what our planning commission's recommendations were, which was no carve out. It was character districts because the way we've got it now, it's either up or down, like Barclay's saying, and then you throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, and I understand there are many people that want to support the carve-out. <coughs> it doesn't seem like we're given that option for a vote for each of the, those possibilities. Frank, tell can, can I say, first of all, this, this thing called the carve-out, that's, I mean, you can call it a carve-out or a carve-in or, I mean, the original, the staff proposal, the original proposal, as I understand it, when it, when it originally went to the Planning Commission, was are you, what was it? It was to include these properties in downtown, okay. as well as to include... It was to include the properties. Yes. It was with when the community discussion was had with Ghent that, the, that they moved. So um, it, it's, it's not like the, the folks who are... are the, that piece of property was carved out. Let me, let me say that. It sounds like we're creating an exception. And um, the... The, what we've heard now for 40 years that the tradition has been that they have had downtown standards. And so, I mean, I think there's a misimpression being created here by somehow these, that this property is being treated um, differently. I mean, um, by its inclusion in the staff recommendation. And it's, and it's not. It's the way it's been treated since we've had a downtown district and for the last since the, the 1960s. It is not a change. It is not, you know, a carve-out. It's not an exception, if you will. The exception would be, would be to do something else. Well, let me say, would it help the council if we just sort of closed the public hearing and then tried to, and, you know, maybe came back and, and tried to uh, deal with the issue in, a plan, in, a, in another meeting or another discussion? Or I just got uh, one question to ask Frank. Frank, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. No, I, I, but it's going to help me. Uh, it's going to help me answer the, the, my the question. question that you're asking me. All right, Frank. Uh, if we did nothing, and somebody wanted to build on that property tomorrow, okay, and this body had to vote, they could actually they could go and get a variance, right? Oh uh, no, sir. They wouldn't be able to get a variance because they still would have use of the property. They would have <laughs> to come before you, showing that they have a development that would meet all the standards that have been established in the ordinance, or ask for waivers from you. For those standards that you can waive. So you you would call them waivers. You wouldn't call it a variance. You would just by, call by code they are called waivers. Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, and so today somebody could build a twelve-story high-rise, and if it was the the will or the consent of this council, 
they could do so? Yes, sir. Okay. They could do that presumably with no waivers. Today? Today. Okay. With the character districts in place, then what would the requirement be? The issue is that the parking standard would be fixed instead of being something that a developer could come to you and say, we'd like to waive it. You would have an open space standard that would be fixed instead of it being something that a developer could come before you and saying, we want to waive it. So today they could do it. Yes, sir. And tomorrow, if you would put the character districts in place, it couldn't because it speaks to uh, the specificity of what we're trying to accomplish. It, if When we bring forward the remaining ordinance, yes, sir, that's intended to provide certainty to the process. Well, what happens between what happens? if we approve it today and we bring so you forward? you want to vote tonight? I want to vote. I mean, I okay. think it's, 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 I think well, it's the, What happens between now, if right, we pass the character district, not really knowing the rules, and December when we get the <coughs> rules, if somebody wants to develop them? Not a thing, because the, what governs the use of the property is the zoning which is why I stressed at the beginning, this is not a regulatory change. So wait a minute, you saying, is that they could change. do exactly what they could do today? Or yes, exactly they could do exactly what they could do today. Not until the vote in December for zoning well, would be a change. Okay, so back to my question about leaving out the three properties. Only three properties in the city that are in. Why couldn't we just create an island unto themselves, let those sit out there until we understand then create the character districts and then make the decision what character district to put them in based on how it affects the neighborhood or how it affects the developer and, and how it affects the developer. The challenge we would have is as we begin developing the parking regulations, for example, we're going to have some concrete regulations. So my recommendation to you would be to put them in one of the three character districts, actually one of the two character districts, could you put them in urban tonight? Absolutely. By simple motion of council, just as you took East Beach and moved it from urban to suburban, you could do the same thing with these three properties. Okay, well, could you move? Well, I know that. I understand what we, we can do, but I want to understand how it impacts <coughs> all involved before I do it because people are saying they don't understand. And, you know, the, the parking situation, by the way, is just as an aside, no developer worth his salt would ever developed piece of property wasn't properly parked. Enough people that live there, that work there, could park. Do you agree with that, Frank? I would. In I fact, one of the cautions we've heard from developers is a fear that our proposed standards may be too low until they, we begin talking and working through what they are, and then they feel more comfortable. I can't conceive of any type of property where they would not, where you would lease to somebody and say, oh, by the way, you got to find your own parking. So I, I really don't see that as a huge issue, but... I still think the uncertainty is a thing that I think has everybody worried, and that's... Yeah. Andy. If I could recommend something. Um, I, I have my opinion of this, and I'm not going to say that at this point. Uh, however, uh, we, in, we can, and this is just a matter of procedure, Paul, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's just a, a recommendation. I will move at this point that we take those three properties out of the um, downtown property mm. district move it into urban, we can okay. We can try to see if that goes up or down. And then I assume that we can come back and, and sure. I mean, if that makes sense, because I, I have a, a gut feeling this is going to be a 4-3 as it is, if not 5-2. So, I mean, that's my okay. gut to move it along. Yeah, okay, I, I think that's fair enough. Well, but, you know, are we going to still put at jeopardy the, the, the character district Principle that we no because no that's what he's saying. because he's saying I mean we're gonna have it's at least so it's either gonna be in, up or down with the right. carve out or right. carve in right. and then if that doesn't go then we can vote it through the other way right right because I have a feeling it's gonna be four three is it in okay so the if not I still don't understand why we couldn't exempt the three properties because they have to have all the boundaries delineated right. before we can do it it's just that that's just the rule. And honestly, if you look at the, well, you look up at Richmond. If you look at the specifications that he's got delineated, it's really pretty well spelled out. Yes. Yeah. It, it really is there for you. So it's not, I mean, it's not some floating issue. Uh, okay. I mean, I, the, the staff's recommendation is that it, that those properties, the North Brambleton properties by the Hague that we've been talking about, uh, be um, <clears throat> uh, in the traditional or in the downtown 
traditional, in the downtown character district. And the motion is that they be moved into the urban right. district, okay? Right. All right, and so we can call the roll on that, okay? Mr. Burford? No. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? No. Mr. Wynn? No. Mr. Frame? No. Okay, three, four. Pardon me? I said that. What was the, the three, four? Okay, the vote, Mr. Right. President. All right, so we need a five vote so we don't get there. And now we'll vote on the. Now you vote on the. On the character districts. Okay. The two ordinances for this item, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to define character districts within the city and to recommend their locations. If I may, Mr. Mayor, um, I don't know, I, I don't remember voting on um, whether East Beach is urban and suburban. We did. No, we, we did. did. We did. Oh, we did. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long night. <laughs> we're not done. Okay, yeah. we're not done. Okay. <laughs> Beginning of a long night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. We stopped it. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Paul, Protegiru? Can I speak at this sure. time? Yes. All right. Um, I think procedurally, it, uh, my preference would be to move uh, these properties into the urban district, uh, and that's why I made the motion. And there are a couple reasons behind that, and I really would like to, to give some rationale as to why. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, in listening to the speakers tonight, a majority of the speakers tonight, and, and a majority of the contact we've had has been from citizens and people who live in the area. And I really think that we have to, when we weigh out the business side of it, and I appreciate uh, Bruce being here and, and the others that come, and Ray, uh, I appreciate that, but you don't live there. I don't live there, and I have to really respect the individuals who live in the area. And, uh, you know, it was interesting, one of the most compelling arguments really is that footbridge. Uh, and uh, I know that footbridge, what you're going to have is, yes, you would have, I could see people being on one side, coming across, parking over there, which was uh, really something that, that really hit home with me, and I made sure I wrote that down when it was said. Um, I'm going to go back to Frank. Frank, you may have given Anthony the credit for this, but uh, no, you don't have to get up. Uh, I think what struck me was as to why character districts are significant. Um, when we first came on council a little over two years ago, it seemed that every developer was coming in wanting to build apartments all over the city, and it was, it was willy-nilly. And I remember saying, and I, at some point I was voting against them, saying if you want an exception, you're not getting it. Or if you want some kind of, I'm not, we're not, I'm not agreeing to a variance. I'm not agreeing to, you're stuck with the law as it is. That's the density, that's how it is. And finally, I remember going to Frank saying, go block by block within the city and come up where we can have apartments and where we can't have them because they're going up everywhere. And then Frank and the character districts, whether they were in play at the time or uh, started coming about because we do need to get some control of this. Uh, as Terry said, we do know where we are generally in our understanding of, um, of, the, uh, of the zoning issue. We know generally the density issues, we understand those and there are gonna be some adjustments. Um, in the end, I'm somebody who wants character districts, but I figured that we could vote up or down on this issue, and having lost that issue, I will now vote yes for the character districts because I think it's a significant issue and something that I've sought. It's unfortunate that we, we lost amending it uh, to consider what we were doing uh, with regard to uh, uh, these properties, but I will vote in favor of, the, uh, of it at this time. So it's aye. Mr. Smeagol? No. Dr. Wibley? Uh, I similarly am have to really thank Frank Duke. I call him about every three days regarding this issue, and he's been a real trooper and has gone to all the civic leagues, even when he wasn't um, requested to. He's really done his due diligence on that, and I really uh, want to thank him for that. I am struck by that the neighborhood came. I've heard them speak. They're concerned, as I, about the character of that corner and the surrounding Yarmouth. Um, once we vote this in, it's voted in through perpetuity. I understand SL Nussbaum being concerned about loss of development rights, but then it goes to the next and to the next and to the next. Um, when it came to East Beach, the neighbors spoke and we voted. This time it came to the neighbors and we didn't. 
So I'm disappointed that it happened. But character districts are important, and I, like Andy, uh, am not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I'm going to vote aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Uh, I'm, I'm going to vote aye, but I'm going to make one more little punctuation point here. We, first of all, we appreciate everybody coming down here and their involvement in, in this uh, really important issue. I, I would say the Downtown Norfolk Council, th those folks have... I mean, they're enlightened as well as the Gant Neighborhood League is and the Gant Business Association. You can tell this council is divided. We see this stuff differently. And um, uh, we're trying to move the city forward. Uh, the issue about here on uh, the north of uh, Brambleton, the thing that I keep coming back to is we had, is that zoning and distinctions, these districts are sort of social contracts that you have with people. And... Um, you have people who've invested in property there who have a stake in it, who we are, we would be changing the game on, on them right now. And as far as I can tell, I know what, what Frank said, and we're going to talk about these frameworks, that very little, if nothing, is changing by maintaining the <coughs> present tradition and the present downtown designation for this, uh, for these properties. I just... And we're also maintaining that social contract with people who vote, who who invest in our city. So anyway, it's I guess I'm sorry, but I so the second is an ordinance to amend and reordain section two dash three of the zoning ordinance of the city of Norfolk nineteen ninety two in order to create definitions for character districts. <coughs> with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. I will say this look uh, I will say this that uh, you know, every, everyone up here has a, a level of expertise in various areas. And I think at the end of the day, we're protecting the communities around, uh, uh, in and around downtown uh, by creating these character districts, but more importantly, by putting this in the downtown uh, district. And, you know, again, if we do this right, and I've spent a lot of time with Frank, the, community will, the communities around it would not be negatively impacted and it ensures that we have uh, the, the, the proper controls in terms of dealing with developers. And I think at the end of the day, that's what you want to establish. You want to try to protect the integrity of the communities around it, but also make sure that you get the right mix of development, whether it be commercial or retail or residential, in those communities and preserve those communities for years to come. So I vote aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, thank you very much for coming down. We really appreciate the uh, conversation and the interest everyone has demonstrated. Thank you. All right, public hearing two, please. Public hearing two, scheduled for this date, pursuant to action of council on July 24, 2012, to hear comments on the sale of approximately <laughs> one acre of city-owned land on Monticello Avenue between 16th and 17th Streets to Chick-fil-A, Inc. All right, there's no members of the public assigned up to speak to the council on this matter. Thank you. All right, call the vote. Thank you. I have an ordinance authorizing the land disposition and development contract to be entered into with Chick-fil-A and authorizing the conveyance of real property to Chick-fil-A as provided in the LDDC. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Oh, well, I got a question. Sure. Okay. Is this a, is this, uh, is this a contingent contract? Should Chick-fil-A not be satisfied with what planning is saying or doing with regard to the uh, setting of the Chick-fil-A on the property? We have a design review. Right. Uh, so that um, if Chick-fil-A is not willing, if we don't reach agreement on the design, the closing is contingent on that. Okay. Yes. So this is a contingent matter is what we're voting upon to allow. Uh, uh, Am I? Uh, the, the contract is not contingent on that. But the contract requires um, the design to be approved by us so that it would be in violation of the con to contract. The contract requires design review and approval. If, we, if our design review and approval says we don't like your building, we're not breaching the contract. No, no. The, 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 and so we they're allowed out. could enjoin or terminate. Right, right. All right, right. they're allowed out. Yes. So it's, that's a contingency okay. then. Am I correct? Y yes. yes. All right. Yes. All right, aye. Yeah. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay. 
Public hearing three, please. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 24, 2012 on the application of Faith in Action Church by William M. Verabelli, Jr. to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 to change the land use designation from medium density residential to commercial office and for a change of zoning from R11 moderate density multiple family and C2 quarter commercial to conditional C2 district on property located at 4603 Cape Henry Avenue. By 6-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. And Fred Gallup, who I see out here, is uh, on behalf of the Civic League, is here to answer any questions. He's, an, uh, he's a proponent. And William Vereberg, Verabee, Verabee, I'm sorry, verbally, uh, is here as well. He is um, the uh, applicant. No other, uh, no opposition. No other speakers. All right, call the roll. I have two ordinances. The first is an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for property located at 4603 Cape Henry Avenue from medium density residential to commercial office. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. I have a second ordinance, Mr. President. Okay. Uh, an ordinance to rezone property located at 4603 Cape Henry Avenue from C2 and R11 to conditional C2. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Are we, what, where are we? For? Four, Mr. President. Four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 24, 2012 on the application of Rainbow Building Corporation by Donald Kester to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 from low density residential to medium density residential and for a change of zoning from R8 one family to conditional R9 one family on property located at 3316 Marne Avenue. And by 6 zero vote planning commission recommends approval. I have two ordinances for this, an ordinance to amend the general plan of Norfolk 1992 so as to change the land use designation for property located at 3316 Marin Avenue from low density residential to medium density residential. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? He's not seeking to build multifamily here, is he? No, it's two. It looks, it's two separate units. It's just the lot width isn't big enough. This one's cool. No, sir. What the request is is to rezone the property so it can be subdivided to create two single-family houses. Okay. Aye. I just couldn't pull it up fast enough. And I'd looked at it, but I didn't understand it. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. <coughs> Aye. Second ordinance Do it. is an ordinance to rezone property <laughs> located at 3316 Marin Avenue from R8 to conditional R9. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five, please. Public hearing five scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 24, 2012 on the application of Robin Thomas for a change of zoning from I-1 limited industrial, C-2 quarter commercial, and PCO 21st Street Overlay District on property located at 901 through 921 West 21st Street by 6 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Robin Thomas is here as the applicant and the proponent if we have any questions about this. Okay. I have an ordinance to rezone property located at 901 to 921 West 21st Street from I 1 to C 2 and PCO 21st Street District. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing six. Public hearing six scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on July 24, 2012 um, on the application of Vicki S. Hatch for the closing, vacating, and discontinuing of a portion of Kincaid Avenue from the western line of Early Street to its terminus. 6 zero vote planning commission recommends approval. Um, no one signed up to address the council on this matter, so you can call the roll. I have an ordinance closing, vacating, and discontinuing a portion of Kincaid Avenue and authorizing the conveyance to the abutting property owner of any interest the city may have in the underlying fee of said portion of Kincaid Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Okay, the consent agenda, there are nine items here, and is, 
C7 going to be voted on at the end of the docket as a regular agenda item, right? That's correct, Mr. President. It, uh, is, does any member of the council like to, would you like to have any one of these matters considered separately? Love them. C8. C8, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, approve the consent agenda with the exceptions of C7 and C8. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protaziru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And this is to advertise for a public hearing, right? C8, right. C8 is... That's correct. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Angela, do you have a... Um, no, I'd just like to... Um, talk with the civic leagues and whatnot on this issue more before we move forward on it. Well, thank you. Before we schedule the public hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, then why don't we just delay this one until the next um, meeting? What is that, the 11th yeah. of September? Yes, sir. The next night meeting. Okay. Please continue to 9 11 on the consent agenda. Okay. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protoziru? If I could ask, I've noticed uh, there seems to be, and it's coming up often, uh, a lot, we were seeing a lot of auto repair facilities, tire facilities, uh, and I, I just, auto repair and truck facility uh, within the city. And, and I don't, I don't, I understand we want businesses here, but there's a lot that comes with these cars on the lots, mm -hmm. parts laying everywhere. I, I, I mean, I really have an issue with it. It's something, it's something, and I appreciate Angela but, wanting to pull it. And I just want to just wrap it up with this. That being said, this is really something. If we can have Frank look at this, because it's it's almost to the extent of check cashing facilities and things like that that they're coming up, and this is not the first one. This is about the third in the mm -hmm. last four meetings. Um, you know, Little Creek Road is a great example of what went wrong. So I'll, I'll agree with yeah. with uh, pulling it off and say aye, but we really need to examine this. If, Frank, we don't need too much because, I mean, we no. can talk about it yeah. in an informal session of the council. Yeah, we really need I just to wanted to let that. you know you do have a letter of support for this item from the Ingleside Civic League. We did not move this to Planning Commission until we had that support. Okay. And the Planning Commission's uh, vote was? They recommended support based on the... Um, Recommendation of the support of, from the neighborhood. Okay. All right. Then uh, the motion is to continue to September 11th. Okay. Okay. And I'm at Mr. Smeagol. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, just looking at the map of this, this is totally <laughs> within an industrial right. area. It's not on a main road. But um, I. Dr. Wibley. Hi. Ms. Williams. In Ingleside, that mangrove is industrial and residential. So that potential for those extra cars, that, that's what the concern is mm -hmm. for me. I, I just want to go back to the Civic League and just double check and make sure with them. What are we doing? Um, aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1, please. No, they, we didn't do seven. No, we're going to do the, the R7. Are you going to do C7 we're, we're, at the end of the? At the end of the regular agenda. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Was that computer ball? Okay. All right. <laughs> just trying to help you out, man. So. R1. R1 is an ordinance accepting $100,000 from the Virginia Department of Emergency Management That's fiscal year 2011 good. Homeland Security Grant Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the purchase of license plate readers for the Hampton Roads Urban Area Security Initiative Region Grant Program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protoziru? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance accepting a 2012 Public Safety Grant Award of up to $1,500 from the Target Corporation and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds to support the Norfolk Police Department's citywide National Night Out event. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3? A resolution acknowledging and concurring with the June 20, 2012 resolution of Norfolk Public Schools electing the employer certified contribution rate of 11.10% on behalf of employees who are members of the Virginia Retirement System, effective July 1, 2012, dispensed with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. 
Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R4? An ordinance accepting grant funds in the amount of $337,050 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the continuation of the Victim Witness Assistance Program and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for the program. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5? An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of a commercial drive through facility on property located at 1818 Monticello Avenue by 4 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. And Mr. Jeremy Reeves and Rob Hebner are here to answer any questions. All right. Call dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Our sixth. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an eating and drinking establishment on property located at 420 Monticello Avenue, Suite 100, by 3 0 vote. Planning Commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement. Just, just a second. Um, Doug Aronson is here to answer questions if we have any. I'm sorry. Doug. Okay, go ahead. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Um, R7. An ordinance granting a special exception to operate an entertainment establishment on property located at 241 Granby Street. <coughs> Any commission recommends approval. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R8. An ordinance granting a special exception to permit the operation of an entertainment establishment on property located at 123 <coughs> West 21st Street, and the Planning Commission recommends approval. Mr. Sums, William, is, are you here? There you are, okay. And Alan Basin is here to answer questions? Okay. All the Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R9. An ordinance permitting Cape View Village One Condominium Owners Association to encroach into city property at 1878 East Ocean View Avenue with a wood walkway and stairs. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R10. An ordinance granting Riverview Associates LLC permission to encroach into the right of way of 1907 Colonial Avenue and improving the terms and conditions of the encroachment agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R11. An ordinance to amend and reordain Section 25-321 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add a section to authorize the operation of electric golf carts in Berkeley and Pinewell. Jane Bethel is here to, uh, to uh, she's a proponent. Jane, do you want to speak? you want to get, get you later? I think maybe you catch me later. Okay. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Just um, real quickly, uh, I voted against this um, one time for a condominium complex that was asking for this. Um, Pinewell, which is in Ward 5, had asked for this. They're adjacent to the golf sure. course, so it makes sense. Um, as, <laughs> I mean, um, okay. he voted against it when Lock Haven saw it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's I just, right. as, as there's placements, I think we just got to be careful with these uh, golf carts, communities, uh, Broad Creek. There are a couple other communities that make sense because they were def defined that way. But when we start allowing golf carts in neighborhoods that normally wouldn't handle golf courts or c carts couldn't handle it, like so I don't, Larchmont? I don't know if like large one. I don't, right, I don't know if later on we're next to an airport. I don't know what next kind of conversation place. this should lead to. If there should be, should we have character districts for golf carts, Frank? I don't. I'm just. <laughs> leave, leave just Frank alone. He's I don't know, but I'm, just I don't know. Down the road when we're it when we're looking. Depends on if there's enough parking for it. Right. That's right. It depends we, on who's warded in, too. In, That's right. In Berkeley, is what you said the uh, the, um, the shipyard though. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I'm just saying it, down the road, just um, if we're looking at the plan 2030, I don't know if that's being addressed in here or not, but of course I. <laughs> <laughs>
We need a little air time. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a golf community. Yeah. They can't Sorry. even cross Wibbly. the beach to the beach. What am I voting on? Golf, golf cart. Golf. Hi. <laughs> Terry, we know you're behind that. He re reminded us that he voted against it before, but now he's voting for it. He voted against it before he voted for it. It was a condo complex. Ms. Williams. Hi. Mr. Wynn. That's because I didn't like you then. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Mr. Wynn. <laughs> Barkley. Mr. Wynn. Mr. Frame. Yes, I. R12. An ordinance permitting Barbara Smith to encroach into North Shore Road right away with an existing house and overhang. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. Williams. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R13. <clears throat> an ordinance approving the terms of a right of entry agreement with Adams Outdoor Advertising relative to certain vacant property located at 1301 North Military Highway <clears throat> in the city of Norfolk. Dispense with a charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. <clears throat> Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Dr. Wibley. Aye. Ms. William. Aye. Mr. Wynn. Aye. Mr. Frame. Aye. R14. An ordinance to amend and reordain sections 25-653, 654, and 656 of the Norfolk City Code so as to add one new yield intersection, 21 new stop intersections, and one trucks of one-half tons or over prohibition. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiro. This is R R15. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 14. Yeah. I'm sorry. For 14, rather. 14. Yeah, this is the trucks. Yeah. It's to stop signs and stuff. Said I. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R15. An ordinance authorizing the acquisition of an easement for right-of-way improvements over certain property located at 2900 Cape Henry Avenue in the City of Norfolk, approving the terms and conditions of the deed of easement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $350 from funds heretofore appropriated to pay the purchase price for the easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R16. An ordinance authorizing the acquisition of an easement for right-of-way improvements over certain property located at 3000 Cape Henry Avenue, approving <clears throat> the terms and conditions of the deed of easement and authorizing the expenditure of the sum of $600 to pay the purchase price for the easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? I R17. An ordinance authorizing the conveyance to the City of Norfolk by Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters Incorporated of certain property located at the intersection of the southern portion of Greenway Court and Hampton Boulevard in the City of Norfolk, Virginia, and authorizing the City Manager to accept the deed on behalf of the City. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R18. An ordinance to amend and reordain Article 10 of Chapter 25 of the Norfolk City Code so as to allow the riding of bicycles on sidewalks by amending Section 25-398 and to eliminate the registration requirements for bicycles by repealing Sections 25-377, 379, 380, 81, 82, 83 to 4, and 85 and amending Section 25-378. Dispense with the charter requirement. Oh, no, no, no. For reading the ordinance, okay. adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R19. A resolution approving the Norfolk Community Service, Services Board's performance contract with the Commonwealth for fiscal year 2012, renewable by mutual agreement for fiscal year 2014. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R20. <coughs> An ordinance amending ordinance number 44654 so as to provide health benefits for one previously authorized special project position. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? A special project position? Yes, it's previously approved, and the intention was that it would have health insurance with it. <clears throat> Generally, it doesn't, and so this is just to make the provision of, for the health insurance. Okay. Uh, Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R21. 
an ordinance vacating the western five feet of a 10-foot drainage easement located along the eastern property line of Lot 2, Block 5, subdivision of Sussex, also known as 604 Sterling Street in the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R.R. 22. An ordinance to change the starting time of the regular weekly city council meeting scheduled for Tuesday, September 25, 2012 at 7 p.m. to September 24, 2012 at 9 a.m. and to move the location of said meeting. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R23? An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Quarles Petroleum Inc. based on the correction of business license tax assessments. Dispense with the charter requirement yeah. for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Uh, Mr. Protegero? Aye. It's written on there. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R24? An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to CCA Financial LLC based upon the correction of business personal property tax assessments. Starts with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R25. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to CMA CGM America based upon the correction of business license tax assessments. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R26. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Port Norfolk Transport, Inc. based upon the correction of business license tax assessments for <coughs> tax years 2007 and 2008. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R27. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to Croft and Diving Corporation based upon the correction of business lic license tax assessments for tax year 2012. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R28. An ordinance directing the city treasurer to issue a refund to NYT Shared Services Center, Inc., based upon the correction of business personal property tax assessments. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R29. An ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $29,684 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services for the Norfolk Court Appointed Special Advocate Program, appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds and appropriating up to $41,005 in city matching funds and creating and funding a special project employee position for the CASA program director. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegero? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Uh, just a quick question, Bernard. With these grants that we have to approve, um, when, can they get lumped together again in, in one? Do they have to be individual, or can they go under a consent like uh, item? Uh, um, l let me pay attention to that. It will, it will vary uh, so that this one has with it an appropriation in addition and, and probably needs to be on the regular agenda and separate because it's not just the acceptance okay. of a grant. Uh, so that, l let me see if I can't get more efficiency, but this one needed to stand alone. Okay, great, thanks, aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye, R30. A resolution establishing the Mayor's Commission on Poverty Reduction. The second. Dan Montague? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. My name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. I love to have to take part in this poverty uh, reduction committee, I mean, uh, uh, commission because my HR USB bill this month is half again as much as it was a couple months back. I keep telling this council, this little bag here I put out every week and it doesn't weigh 10 pounds when I put it in the can but yet my rate keeps going up and the thing about it is we have got to draw the line on this because 
you know, my uh, uh, pension checks don't keep going up. And so, therefore, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm putting out the same little bit of trash, you know, but uh, you guys keep raising the rates on me. You know, and anyway, yeah, I could understand if it was three or four dollars, but you know, when you make it half again as much as it was in the spring, you know, that's, that's a little bit much. So, thank you. So you're against the poverty commission, right? Huh? You're never mind. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm for it. Hey, you know, because I'm not gonna need it. Is the <laughs> is or, or, okay. got it? Commission on poverty. Okay, thank you, Ari. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Uh, Mr. Protegere? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. R31. An ordinance to amend and reordain Chapter 2.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 is amended so as to add one new article. And this item establishes the Military Economic Development Advisory Committee and the Mayor's Advisory Commission on Veterans Affairs. So, uh, John Willis? Mr. Willis, would you? And I'll be right with you, Tom. I'm not doing too well. Doing fine. Uh, my name is John Willis. I have lived in the city of Norfolk at, uh, well, different addresses for the better part of 50 years. Okay. Um, I live in a 2200 block of Tarleton Drive right now. I've lived there about, about 30 years. Okay. I'm also uh, president of Branch 60 of the Fleet Reserve Association, uh, a veterans association. Uh, for sea service veterans, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. We currently have some 900 and some odd members. Uh, having lived here for a long time, I've seen the city's interest in veterans go from enthusiastic uh, embrace to defin deafening indifference. Uh, I am for this uh, Advisory Commission on Veterans because I think the city needs to pay attention to their veterans, how they think, how they live, and what their interests are. Uh, I applaud Captain Andrews. I will <coughs> That's all I have to say. Thank you for coming down, Mr. Willis. Tom Leischer. Good evening, Tom Lesher. I reside at 4912 Cape Henry Avenue in, in Norfolk. Um, the city of Norfolk has within its boundaries a representation of just about every major veterans organization this country has. And in some cases, there are more affiliates than we have two or even three affiliates of each of these organizations. This, this uh, change to the ordinance will give the city council a direct line to all these organizations now uh, with assistance of paid regarding activities, uh, questions that you may have the, about uh, different veterans affairs uh, that the city would like to conduct. And in turn, it will give the, all these organizations a direct line to the city council now on uh, ideas that we may have to, uh, uh, to assist uh, veterans and, and any help that we can provide the city. So I obviously am going to speak, I speak in favor of this uh, resolution. Uh, I've been working with the, uh, John Andrews on this, we're, we're in place, and all we're waiting for is for you to give it a go ahead, and away we go. Thank you very much. If, if I can, um, Tom is the, uh, is, was uh, the genesis of this effort to uh, create this advisories commission, and he stopped me one day in my tracks, I don't know, a year and a half ago, Tom, longer? Just about, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and said Norfolk needed a commission like this to address the concerns of the veterans. I mean, we're going to have a Veterans Day ceremony. I mean, there are lots of, but there are all sorts of things that, uh, especially as the population is declining and growing, that uh, the council, and we have a lot of younger veterans coming out, obviously, who need our help. And Tom has been, uh, he's been involved in a lot of really good efforts. And uh, this is, Tom has agreed to serve on the commission and to be a part of it and help us with it. So. I want to thank you for this and thank John. Thank you for coming down. We really intend to take this seriously. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegeru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R32.
An ordinance to amend and reordain Chapter 6.1 of the Norfolk City Code 1979 so as to add a new Article 8, creating an Animal Advisory Board. Um, Ellis James. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the City Council, Mr. Jones, my City Manager. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the great city of Norfolk. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for the action that you've just taken on 31. Very important for our veterans. Um, I would like to rise in support of this new committee or commission, whichever technically it is. Um, and I would like to keep it simple because you've been through a long meeting. I'd like to recommend to the city that as you set this animal advisory board up, that you consider appointing persons or persons who have studied the behavior patterns of raptors at the Norfolk Botanical Garden. And as an example, as you well know, eagle experts, photographers, scientists, etc. In view of the proposed harassment of birds around Norfolk International Airport, which uh, borders the garden. I think it would be very appropriate at this point because we are in for a tough slog in the months and several years ahead, I'm afraid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ellis. All right, call the roll, please. Dispense with the charter of requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protogiru? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? It's about time. Aye. Dr. Wibley? <laughs> Obviously, you haven't been here long enough. <laughs> this is lightning fast. Is it? <laughs> oh, man. Scary. <laughs> yeah. Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? No. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> okay. The next item is was C7, Mr. C7. President, and it is an ordinance approving the Third Amendment <coughs> between the City of Norfolk and Direct Invest LLC et al. for the premises located at 500 East Main Street in the City of Norfolk, authorizing the City Manager to execute the Third Amendment to the lease and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $121,870 from funds heretofore appropriated to cover the lease payments for the remainder of fiscal year 2012-2013. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? This is the lease. This is the lease. <coughs> Uh, yeah, yes, this uh, it, uh, is uh, a renovation of the existing lease. The development has negotiated a lower rent in consideration of extending it. So, yes, it's the lease for the space uh, on Main Street. The, the, the Department of Development operates in the office building that Mr. Protogero's firm is in. You didn't have to give them that shot of disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, why, why? I mean, one time we talked about consolidating, um, we have a building on Granby Street that's pretty empty, other than IT being in that building. Why are we still leasing from other folk instead of putting that, saving that money? That's a city manager question. Yeah, I know I was looking at Bernie, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Well, I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to do in terms of uh, getting out of space that we're leasing. Um, this was something that wasn't planned as one of the moves of moving a department, but I will assure you that when opportunities do arise, we do have a list of departments we'd like to consolidate and get out of leasing space. And that's an opportunity. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I mean, we, we're not moving from downtown, but I mean, we have a, I mean, I'm sure you've been over to that Grammy building and the space that we have available over there. I mean, I just think that we, we're, you know, we complain how tight times are as it relates to Resources, one hundred and twenty some thousand dollars to me—it's a lot of money. When we considering, we don't have to be utilizing that money, um, you know, for for rent space at this time. So, uh, I just hope that we do a better job in terms of uh, uh, looking at these opportunities and maximizing the spaces that we do have. I, I'm, I'm gonna vote no. <clears throat> Mr. Protegero. Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Um, just a real quick comment. I think one of the purposes of having economic development in that space is because of the 
being able to market our city to potential uh, developers. And it's, it is a yeah, I mean, wonderful conference room. I've met in there a couple times, and I think it shows off our, our city. But, uh, you know, regardless of that's a good reason or not, it, it I. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. I have one additional item, Mr. President. It's a resolution appointing or reappointing 18 persons to four boards and two commissions for certain terms. A little bit different, though. <laughs> Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. That's all I have, Mr. President. Okay, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda.